Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to Unpicking Fashion, today's webinar, uh, which will see the uh, special guest, uh, Norbert uh, Sommel, um, Design Director of Brioni, and of course, uh, also the participation of Adrian Roberts, uh, International Director of Education, who will um, moderate the event. So, Adrian, are you there? I am here and I have a voice. Excellent. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, Welcome. Thank you. And it's great to be welcoming Norbert. Uh, Norbert, you can turn on uh, your screen now. He's okay. probably, it's probably during it. Yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, let's talk about um, what is um, Begin Fashion, this new series of webinars. Okay. So, um, Actually, it was Norbert that inspired me to create this idea of unpicking fashion. He came around with such a great idea when he was with my students of defining what is fashion and the fashion industry, and also um, talking about his experience as a student and how he found his way through different brands. Uh, and that was super interesting. So hopefully he'll be back online with us in a moment. Maybe, should, do we, should we start with the video and then we can give them a Yes, okay. thank you. Let's go to the video and then we'll be back in a moment. Okay. Academia is creativity, Italian innovation. Passione. Inspiring. Una famiglia un po' pazza. Miraculous. Heritage and uh, future of design. Famiglia. It's energetic. Innovativa. Sorprendente. Qualità, my academic family. Bellezza e tanto amore. Prorompenza della libertà creativa. Rigore. Creativa, incontournable. L'Accademia coltiva talenti. Okay, well, um, I'm here. I've asked Norbert to give me a call to see if he's got a problem, but we did speak five minutes ago, and uh, here we are. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, thank you, Norbert. You found the right button. Yes. Okay, so let's get started unpicking fashion. So, um, I'd love to introduce you. You're the design director of Brioni, and... Uh, before you were at Brioni, you've actually been through quite an experience of luxury. I mean, your career so far has been pretty, um, it looks on the surface glamorous, but very nice. From uh, Berluti, uh, Louis Vuitton, Landman, a little bit of Balenciaga, and now at uh, Brioni. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Okay. And as I mentioned before, you quite inspired me to do this series, Unpicking Fashion, because that's exactly how you spoke to my students that time. Uh, I heard you talk about your education experience and then how you arrived at uh, 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 Brioni. So perhaps you'd like to start about growing up in Austria, how you found your way to fashion, which wasn't actually your idea in the beginning, perhaps. Uh, yes, thanks, thanks Adrian. Uh, so my story is, uh, you know, I, I grew up in Austria um, in a very, very, uh, you know, very, very, um, how do you say, like, in a village where, where there was nothing going on. 
um, it's a village which is uh, as big as Paris, and you have to imagine that there is less than 2,000 people living there. So in my part of the village, there's like 13 houses, and it's surrounded by greenery and, and rivers and everything. So uh, growing up there, uh, I was completely free. I was running around and going into the woods and, uh, you know, completely free. Um, but I also was a child who was always like drawing and, um, you know, I was always a little bit more on the shy side. So I was always having my own little world. Um, um, and, uh, I, I, you know, I always enjoyed that, but I always felt like a little bit of an outsider. Um, but nevertheless, you know, I, I my, my, my school, um, in Austria, you can choose when you're like, uh, I think 13 years old, um, that you do either a, a gymnasium, it's called, uh, where you have, um, you know, you continue your studies or, um, you combine it with, uh, with a sort of, uh, um, you know, um, education. And I did the, the, the version where I did the gymnasium, um, this higher school with a, a tailoring, um, tailoring, uh, you know, uh, education. So, uh, I, I started with, um, you know, to, to, in this school, you had to learn how to, to pattern cut. You have to, to, to know how to design. Uh, you had to, to know how, um, you know, all the things that you need to, to be a team, basically. Uh, and, you know, I, I came to the school kind of by accident because I, I, I'm always, was, you know, did like how to draw, but uh, I, I really wanted to be, that, be an architect. But the architect school was really far away because uh, it was like two hours away. So um, the teachers told me, you know, maybe not the best advice, uh, maybe go to a special school and then afterwards you can study architecture. So I came from a uh, accident, you know, so, um, but uh, I, I really, really enjoyed it. You know, uh, I, I think I found my, my passion. I, I really like, you know, um, being there from the beginning, being able to design, to, to pattern cut, to, to make a garment. Uh, it was really something I really enjoyed. Um, so I did this school for five years and then, um, of course, I was like 18 years old. I, I needed to look for, for a job. Uh, and then, um, also first of all, eight, 18 years old, you have to, in Australia, you have to do the military service. I, I decided not to because uh, I am completely against weapons. So I did, um, a civil service. I worked in a hospital for one year. And uh, afterwards, I started working for a company uh, in Austria, which is known to make sports for garments, you know, uh, run sports for garments, which are, uh, you know, you uh, when you do uh, uh, skiing and stuff like this. So uh, I was working, uh, I was starting to, to work in the production, and I was supposed to become, you know, a person who owns production. In the end, I was feeling that my, my my design point of view was really lost you know i really enjoyed so much the drawing side of of this business and 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 one day my mother showed me an article um, about a school in uh, in england um which is called center and uh, you know a lot of designers i i really enjoyed went there and and so i i applied to go to the school and Somehow I, I got it accepted. So um, to do menswear. Sorry, you you applied to do menswear. Uh, I I got to make menswear. Yes, yes, yes. So I I, I did some months. I did the BA. And, uh, I did the MA. And some things. Um, and and there I really found like really like-minded people you know so uh, for me it was like really like coming from Austria where you're a little bit like on the outside you know and uh, nobody understands really what you want to do and you have like all of a sudden you have like your friends and then they're like all have a kind of similar upbringing there you know uh, and you go into the school and you you really uh, you see all these people all these different ideas uh, i mean that they might be different but um, at least they have a very, very similar kind of passion for, for, for what we're doing. So I absolutely loved it. I never moved, I never went to London before, but then I, I stayed there for six years. Um, 
And during uh -huh. the time, I was very lucky because, you know, um, uh, because me uh, being able to to to, uh, to to make garments without an apron because I had this school in Austria already, uh, and also the experience in this uh, company. And uh, one uh, day, my friend who was working at Alexander McQueen called me and asked me if, uh, if I could help her immediately to do uh, alterations for um, for uh, for a photo shoot. They were planning because they had a model and she was trying on the, the garments for, for the campaign and uh, she was very, very skinny and the, all the garments had to be altered overnight for this photo shoot and the next day with uh, Ignite. And they didn't have enough uh, um, you know, in-house uh, tailors to do that. So they, they asked me to join in and help them. And, uh, and Lee was very, very happy with my work and offered me uh, afterwards to work with him as a, as a you know, a, a kind of, a, to help him to work on the show pieces for, for, for the fashion shows in, in Paris. So I was very lucky to be in, at, at the right point uh, in the yeah. time. So, and McQueen has completed it in the way, you know, he was, uh, while my personal, uh, your fashion is very calm and more inspired by Chisanda or Hemad Lan. McQueen was all about excess and, and uh, showmanship, and drama, and and uh, using all these materials which you could never afford as a as a student. So I was really, uh, you know, blown by, by by all of that. And the technique of McQueen was was phenomenal. I was I, I still, you know, I goosebumps. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I think about him. He could trade the, the garment in, in like seconds, and it was like an haute couture thing. Um, so I was very lucky to be uh, working with him for, for you know, this um, this period of time. Uh, and he was in a very, very uh, up mood, so he was in a very, very good mood, and he was uh, really creative, and it was incredible. So I was working at the McQueen, so I was supposed to start a new. Um, uh, you know, internship with uh, uh, Burberry with, um, and McQueen was like coming to me. He was very like instant. He's like, "What are you going to Burberry for? Design fresh coats? You know, something like that." Uh, and uh, I stayed in Burberry for for a few months, and then they asked me to get McQueen uh, to help again for for the show. And, did, did you like that concept of, of Alexander McQueen his own taste? Because your taste is is much more. Did you enjoy that contrast, that battle? Yes, I, I really enjoyed it because uh, uh, for me, as a designer, I think it's, um, it's very interesting as well, the, the kind of technique. And I think uh, even it was a, a, you know, a very fashion uh, brand, uh, he had an incredible technique. And uh, this is something which I really enjoy. You know, so he really knows what he knows what he was doing. So, so this is what is something uh, I really love. McQueen. Also, uh, uh, Lee McQueen, he came from a tailoring background, coming from Savile Row. So yeah. it must have been quite interesting for you both to come from that tailoring uh, first place. And yeah, then... yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it was really for me. It was uh, an eye-opening experience because I was also allowed to. To, uh, to go with him to Paris and to, to help him uh, prepare the show uh, in Paris. And it was super exciting, you know. He would take uh, finished garments and he would cut them up and last minute this is something really different. And, and uh, it was high energy and it was, you know, being uh, also close to this model, which are like almost like aliens, they're like uh, 20 cents taller than I am. And you know, the, from the fashion image and then next to it, next to you, and then there is another video. It's all very impressive and it's very, you know, a lot of different things going on. Uh, so, so I really enjoyed it, and I, you know, in the set of fashion. So, so it was really good inspiration uh, for me. And then, uh, you know, I did my master, and I uh, was like, as well, to have somebody, a uh, horse director who was uh, very well known. She's, uh, Sadly, she was, uh, she was uh, Louise Wilson, and she helped me as well a lot because I was a very quiet guy, you know, very maybe unsecure of what I wanted to do. I, 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 remember, I remember you as a student. 
Mm, yes, we did a project together yeah, in, exactly. in the BA, exactly. <laughs> but actually, I only remember two students, and you're one of them. Mm. It's strange, because why do I remember the quiet boy? Because the other guy, um, Aaron, he went on to create a label called Black. Yes, and yes. He's very exuberant, and his taste was very close to mine. But I remember yeah. the quiet boy as well, which is you. <laughs> and it's quite funny that it's students reach you in different ways, or you remember them in different ways. It was because of your seriousness that actually uh, you uh, communicate in your quiet way through your seriousness. And uh, that was very lovely. Anyway, let's get on to the reason yeah, 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 yeah. inspired you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I did the BA and the MA, and uh, I, I was lucky to work with Louisa, uh, who really helped me to, you know, to be and to really understand my ideas. And, uh, you know, um, in the BA, I was, uh, you know, I, it was very easy for me to, to do this. Uh, you know, I could draw, I could build the garments, uh, while some of my co uh, other students, maybe they had this passage just started out to create garments. Of course, it's much more, it takes much more time and uh, it's, it's much more difficult to, to show uh, garments if you don't know how to sew properly yet. You know? So it's, it's like being a beginner next to somebody who could not be how to tailor. So the, the BA I found very easy. And then I went to the MA and, uh, and then Louise, she, she really like, she failed me in everything. She's like, mm -mm, not good enough. You <laughs> say no, not good. No, you can do that. You know? And I was like, I, I was like, oh my god, what have I do wrong? I cannot believe it. Oh, how dare she? <laughs> she but she, she really she really helped because uh, you know she she knew that I can draw anything and can make anything, but might you know in, in St. Martin's to really to show off a little bit to the, it's very important to, to create something very striking because I want to be in the fashion show because only half of the people in, in the fashion show show was designing, designing, designing. And it was not me. And she saw that and she was like, no, this is not you. You just, you know, you don't do something serious. You don't do something which is represents you. But you I think you come from different and she's really right. You know, she really put in the, uh, in a way uh, I, you know, I, you know, you know, with my with my taste, um, which is more quiet, she she pushed this taste, and and she said, you know, there's not many people out there who, who like this kind of thing. So go for what you like. You don't need to show off. I know that you can sew. I know that you you're able to do this, but uh, it's not you. You know, you you're not gonna uh, gonna continue with this because in in a one point you're gonna. You, you're not gonna be, you know, it's it's not gonna be you, and people will will uh, will will see through you, you know, kind of thing. So she really helped me, and uh, in the end, uh, she she really supported me, and uh, you know, uh, and she put me at, as the last man as well showing on, on the catwalk. So so all of this kind of thing. So I've uh, um, very much uh, in depth to her as well. Um, Adrian, I cannot hear you. Sorry. Am I back on again? No, it's so it's beautiful how she found in you that that expression of design. And I love the idea that fashion doesn't always have to shout. Mm -hmm. You can whisper fashion. Yes. Um, and I think that's hopefully where we come to talk about uh, what you're doing in Brioni, how you can be a pure fashion brand which is experimental, exciting, but you don't have to scream. Yeah. It, it's really, it, she really told me that. So, it's, you know, I, I did other things as well. You know, after, after school, I, 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 I was really lucky on, on, on my whole uh, way because, you know, um, I finished school, I, I did my master's, and I, I was... Uh, I was hired uh, as, a, as an assistant, as the first assistant to Lucas Ossenbreiber, who just started at Laverne. So Lucas started two months before me, and I was his first assistant. 
And uh, the first four collections, it was only Lucas and I, and of course Albert, with the creative direction of Albert, uh, we were creating Lava Menswear. And it was supposed to be just, um, you know, a, a kind of little wardrobe on, you know, to go with the women's wear because uh, Albert's women's wear was already uh, quite well known. He was there for two and a half years, and uh, and uh, the press and the, and and the clients loved what he did. And he was always asked to. Men's for business as well. So, um, in the beginning, it was supposed to be not even a show, it was supposed to be just an extension a little bit of women's wear. Um, but then, um, uh, Alba gave us the possibility to, to, to put last minute a, a little show together, which we had in the Hotel de Crillon, and, and uh, people seemed to really like what we did, and, and, and so it, it grew quite a bit of men's wear. So, I was there for quite a long time and I really enjoyed it. And I think there was a lot of influence because um, there for me and Lucas and uh, Albert, because, you know, in the beginning, uh, sometimes when you're a, a, a tuna designer, you are you're put into uh, one category. You know, you, you either work on, on, on jersey or you do the trousers or you work on shirts. But there in, in La Vain, I was uh, really uh, next to Lucas for everything. You know, we did the shoes, we did the accessories. I had to work on classic suiting, I had to work on, uh, you know, knitwear, leather, everything. I was allowed even to go to the to the campaign shooting, which we did with all these amazing photographers. So, you know, um, I was very lucky to be at this age, normally just a junior designer, to be uh, like a 360 degree view. And um, then I was made uh, head of pre-collection because at this time uh, Lava split the collection in two and um, we started to do the pre-collection and was asked me to do work with this part so he could concentrate on the fashion part. And, um, it must have been wonderful having that uh, experience to work with such wonderful luxury fabrics. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, it was probably the first brand that really started pushing the fabric and the luxury of fabric for men in such an exotic way. Yes, and it's, it's very funny as well because you know Alba pushed very much the the, the feeling of uh, of women's fabric for men as well, which we we come back afterwards to Rion as well. I tell you why it's it's such a coincidence again, you know. So I I, I did the pre-collection I did for a few years and uh, I had my own assistant and I also was. To work on the on the collection, I always got one theme from Lucas and skin fitness and everything. So um, doing that, and then I got a call from Braga, uh, and they offered me the whole of the manager. So, uh, for me again, I was very quiet. It was a very big step. I didn't even know for something else. But then of course, the way much much was much higher. And what's interesting there was that we had a dedicated atelier by people making the garments in house. That's something that I really enjoy. And uh, I was working with Alexander Wong. He told me, you know, uh, Norbert, I need somebody who does the menswear. I'm super busy with the women's wear and the accessories. It takes all my time away. I, the, the product, uh, the product, sorry, the, the Balenciaga menswear was um, a very, very small part of the business. It was like 5%. And then, uh, you know, so I was let free. He gave me the, the inspiration for the season. And then uh, I saw him several points during the collection. And um, there, I really learned to, uh, to 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 manage a team, you know, because of my quietness and it's also a little bit, you know. But I was very scared to take on this job, but in the end, it worked quite well, you know, because you are with the same kind of people, you know. And uh, I was kind of lucky that they were into what we've done, and we were a very small team, and that was, you know, it was just it worked kind of well. And then with the arrival of Demna, the whole thing changed. Of course, you know, um, Demna had his own vision and had already planned to bring her, his own people into the, into the design team, which is something very, very normal. You know, um, if, you, if you take on a, a creative director role, you, most of the time you definitely change the head of design. Uh, you bring your own people with you because they really know what you like. And, you know, I was working with Demna and it was very exciting because he's, He's completely fearless, you know, he's like, uh, if you look at the color card and uh, he would, you know, what do we choose? So he would tell you, okay, what's this most ugliest color here? And go, this is the green and the, the white, and then, okay, this we're gonna take. So he's like, really like, and we just take black as well. So really, really fearless, uh, but of course he has his own team, so the, the problems are stopped. 
And um, then I was um, I was very very quickly picked up by Kim Jones, who was a, another tutor uh, from me at St. Martin's, and he always wanted to work with me a little before. And um, I was working with him on the tailoring. He was having uh, he was having uh, you know some problems with his tailoring designer, and um, so this position was free. And uh, I was working on the pre collections and also on the collection on trousers, uh, shirts. Uh, codes and uh, I was lucky again to be at the right time because it was the Supreme collection. So um, it was very nice because uh, it was the first time when when Kim wanted to change the silhouette of uh, Vuitton before it was very slim trousers and then we, we, we created a look which is much more relaxed with this uh, Supreme uh, accessory. So it was a very, very big step and it was a super successful collection. So I was really lucky to be there as well. Uh, having been able to to have uh, the people from Supreme in the office and and all these kind of celebrities in the office was kind of amazing as well. So I stayed for him for uh, for two seasons and also at the same time I was working uh, with Alexander Wong who called me back to work as as a design director for his uh, Adidas line. So I was uh, going twice to New York per month to meet him and uh, doing review to at the same time. Then uh, Kim told me, you know, uh, Norbert, I'm going to uh, leave uh, Vuitton, but my friend uh, Haider, he needs somebody at uh, Bellutti. And uh, I think you're going to go on very, very well with him. You have the same uh, aesthetic and he will going to love you. So I, I started with um, to go uh, to work with Haider uh, after a year. And, it, you know, it was it was also like... An incredible experience because Heide is the most amazing colorist ever. I mean, he's he spent you know a whole day to do uh, colors for for a leather blue zone or something like that, just to get the, the right tone of, of a certain uh, blue or red or whatever it was. But um, you know, he's he's something somebody who really inspired me and he polished me again. You know, I have um, Lucas who told me everything about construction of the garments, Albert who told me everything about storytelling. Then I have Alexander Wong who was more commercial but really fun. And then I have Demna who's completely fearless. Then I have, uh, you know, uh, Haida. I have, I have Kim Jones who is uh, like inspiration from, uh, from everywhere around the world, gives designer extreme freedoms, you know. Um, and then uh, Haida was, you know, my, my last uh, mentor, and I uh, was really lucky to, to have him as well. Very, very personal guy. I mean, he, is, he puts all his insight into the collection, so um, very beautiful to work with him. On. But now it's all about you. Yes. And now it's all about you. So yeah. you've got all these wonderful mentors. You've been this wonderful journey. Yes. You get to uh, Berluti. If I may say so, it sounds like you've come home to Berluti. It sounds like... Brioni, Brioni. <laughs> but it's not sort of Brioni, but it sounds like you've come home to Brioni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Found uh, your way there because yeah. of... <clears throat> uh, Brioni was, uh, came up quite quickly after I finished uh, Berluti and uh, I was I was quite lucky because, you know, um, already I was quite interested in the brand because I saw it as something uh, I really liked the quality. First of all, I, I even... Before I joined uh, Brioni, I was already having some buying some pieces for myself. I still have them: uh, uh, a white uh, Sea Island shirt and a, a gray cashmere turtleneck, which I still wear. So this was before I even started to work at Brioni. So it was something, uh, you know, something you like, and and you you get offered the the, the creative director job there. So it, it's very much in sync, you know. So. I, but I, I feel like I don't have to change myself at all in Brioni, you know. It's about menswear at the highest level. Uh, it's a lot about um, traditional craftsmanship. It's a lot about um, making uh, a man more beautiful. It's not about shouting. It's it's something, uh, you know, which anybody can wear who is interested in this kind of style. Um, and uh, yeah, it's my day to day, but uh, for me, I, I find it very natural to, to work in this, in, in this place. You know, uh, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. I'll, I'll get it out of you. Yeah. So wh where do we start? Chicken and egg. So mm -hmm. where every season, is it going to be different? Or every season you know you're going to start off with the fabrics and the colors or you start off with the concept? 
How are you working now? Yeah, you know, uh, Brioni went through a lot of, of uh, changes before I arrived. There was uh, Brendan, and uh, there was Justin, and then there was Nina, and then uh, I'm the fourth designer in five years. So there was a lot of uh, big changes uh, going on there. Um, and what I wanted to do, um, also I, I kept the design team. So because, you know, it's, it's actually quite disheartening sometimes. You know, it happened to me twice in Balenciaga and in uh, they looked at um, you know I had to leave the company uh, overnight, uh, and it's it's very it's very tough because uh, but it, it's the right decision as well. So I understand the designers who do that, do that do that, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to try to work with the people who existed there. So that that was something. Um, there was a lot of changes. So uh, for them, it was a new designer, so they felt uh, excited and, and stuff like this. And I wanted to bring Brioni to to a level where it's more calm again, because um, you have to also uh, imagine if you have every season a new designer, the clients are not very happy because they're, they're not going to trust in you. Uh, it's just the clients who buy the pieces and the, the, the shops who buy the pieces, because, you know, you have to create a, a, a sort of a synergy with them. You have to, um, you know, they, you have to get known for something. You know, you you have to continue with something. So, uh, to answer your question, Adrian, it's it's something which is, you know, um, yes, there's always different influences uh, in Brioni, but it's always like a continuation. It's it's something to 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 not scare too much the, the clients because our client is is not a fashion client. It's it's a luxury client. So it's it's a little bit different. Of course, they want to see. More. Season, but it will take them sometimes um, two or three seasons to, 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 you know, uh, in the showroom to, to really, you know, to, to go for the newness as well because the, you know, the, the, the price point is very very expensive. So uh, you really have to, um, you know, see that the, that the designers is following this through and uh, uh, finishing things off and, and continue, continuing so that they can see something, you know, that there is a continuation. And if they buy something. Uh, from Brioni this um, this season, they don't have to put it on sale straight away the next season because of the price point is super high, and uh, you know so it's all about continuation, but still a, a lot of newness uh, coming in 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 Brioni. Can we can we talk about the newness because I love fashion and the idea to make something fashion it has to be new. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and the concept that you're talking about is, is a contemporary concept. Uh, we build we we build wardrobes. We build that we curate our own wardrobes. And therefore, the clients, you have to have that continuity, no matter what level of market you're working with, because you want to be able to build a wardrobe and, and form it and curate it yourself. And so how do you bring the newness to Brioni, which is a real art? Because, again, it's a whisper rather than a shout. Where, where do you get the newness from? I know you've been working on special uh, shaped jackets and fabrics. I'd love you to uh, articulate some of that, please. Yeah. Uh, so, so the newness is always coming from me. You know, I always look... Uh, Partly in the archive, because first maybe I have to explain as well uh, what Brioni was and what it is now. Because Brioni started out as the most avant-garde menswear brand in the world. Brioni was at the same level in the 50s as Dior for women at the same time. So you have to imagine that uh, um, the, there were two tailors in Rome um, during the... Dolce Vita area, uh, and they were uh, doing something completely different, unheard of. You know, um, the one of the, the speci specialities was uh, to create colorful dinner jackets. For instance, um, at this point, at this time, um, dinner jackets were uh, they were in uh, black. You could wear it at midnight, and sometimes ivory, and sometimes very very little, uh, very dark green. But what these guys did, they, they made dinner jackets in fuchsia or yellow or women's haute couture fabric. So it was like really like, you know, like almost like Denne Balenciaga now, you know, super forward thinking, super, um, you know, avant-garde. So this was the starting point of Brioni and nobody knows about this. It's, it's not a classic menswear brand. And Brioni was the first brand uh, who put menswear on the catwalk. Brioni was the first brand to make trunk shows. Brioni was the first brand to have a fashion show transatlantic in a in a in a plane. Brioni was the first brand, uh, brand to, you know, do you remember the Balenciaga show with the water? We only did this 50 years ago. 
they, they, they put water in the hotel in the Battle of Astoria, they put water in the ballroom and the models were walking through water. I mean, this is, this is like extreme avant-garde, what we're talking about. And um, a lot of uh, American um, uh, actors who were in, in Rome at the time brought this Rioni style, this Italian sour affair and this, this colorfulness into, into America. And that's how the Brioni name was, you know, uh, created a kind of a worldwide feeling. And that's why also we're still looking at uh, actors as a, our, you know, our, uh, as our celebrities or, or our campaigns are mostly done with actors. Uh, so the starting point is super, super on that. So I, I'm still getting inspired by, by that, you know, to be not to be afraid of innovation. You know, uh, some, I was asked uh, recently uh, by a journalist uh, if Brioni was a heritage brand. And I think it's absolutely not a heritage brand. Maybe it was uh, a few seasons ago, but I think now we need to innovate because the, the world is changing too rapidly. And, uh, you know, we, we, uh, if we just continue with classic tailoring, we will not exist in in like the next uh, 50 years you know of course the tailoring is super important for us and we do it super well and our suits are phenomenal and if you need a any business suit and you have the money for it you know after you rub only you cannot go back to anything else that's why we have a, a very loyal customer base you know but for me it's very important to innovate as well because Brioni is an innovative brand started out uh, out of innovation and also you know have this kind of little eccentricity as well you know so it's not to be afraid and to not only have gray and blue suits and and uh, you know there with color and there with uh, fabrics which are a little bit different and there with techniques which are modern you know I always say uh, Brioni needs to be for a modern man you know it cannot be only for a 65 year old it needs to be for somebody you know of course it's not going to be for a 25 year old because maybe a uh, the, the style I'm doing is too quiet for, for these guys who need to maybe show a little bit more, you know, a daring style or something like that. But in my age, when you're like 40 and you, you know, you feel that uh, you've done, you know, old fashioned, you want to build a wardrobe and, uh, you know, it, it's this person I'm, I'm talking to, you know, um, who is, you know, who is very confident uh, uh, what he's doing. He, he doesn't want to show off uh, different brands. He doesn't want to need a, you know, a big logo. He he is more, you know, it's more about underlining the personality. So there, there's men out there who, who prefer this kind of uh, style. So I'm speaking to, to this kind of guy. But, you know, as you said, Adrian, um, the innovation always starts and the fashion starts always with, with innovation for me. I always think, what is the guy doing? What does he need? What could be new on the market? So, for, for instance, I'm, I'm wearing this jacket, you know, it's it's like super, super light. I don't know if you see it, but um, it's a double splittable, but it's like light as a feather. You have to imagine you have to take this fabric and you have to you have to take a knife and you have to open up the edge of the fabric, which is almost like light as, you know, air. And you have to stitch all by hand, and this is like innovation for me. So it's it's something which looks uh, quite formal, but it it weighs absolutely nothing. So uh, this kind of innovation we be doing in Brioni. So and you know it's it's more about the fabric uh, as well. You know the fabric gets more and more soft. We when I started this work, you know um, there was fabrics which are a super one hundred six. I don't know if you're familiar with that, which is. You know, 100 grams of uh, yarn can make 160 meters of thread. And now we have uh, super 200s, to, super 250s. So we can make almost double as much length with these threads. The, the threads become finer and finer. Some of our wools are more fine than cashmere and they feel like silk, you know. And and it's this kind of uh, wow effect I'm always, always talking about, you know. When you touch Brion, it's like, it's wow it's like does this exist how is it possible that such you know extreme that you get goosebumps you know it's like this effect and this is is something what our clients love so much about Brioni because you you always feel like you are you are in a cloud of of you know extreme softness so so you can go through the day without any problem. You know, you don't feel this person anymore. They become a second skin for you. They, you look um, fairly classic, but uh, 
you feel just incredible. You know, it's like a, it, it's almost like a pick, pick me up. You know, you put this clothes on and, and they're just like weightless and, and soft and, uh, and, and, and all of that. And it's, I think it's for a man who travels a lot and he has a lot of, you know, men are getting much more, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, the life of our client is getting more and more busy and, uh, you know, has to, I think the last thing he has to think about is the clothes. So, and, and this is for the, where I want to come in, you know, um, to create a wardrobe for him, which is just working, you know, and then maybe in the evening part, I have, I have something which is a little bit more eccentric and really like a little bit more shouting and, you know, where you're at a party and you want to, you just have fun and you just let it go and, and stuff like this. So uh, during the, the day, we are a little bit more, um, you know, hold back, we are, we are, we are well dressed, we are modern. It doesn't mean we are dressed in, in, in shirt and tie, but it's, it's a modern, wear, modern wardrobe, which is light and which has the function, which is, um, you know, uh, as I said, fabrics which are very soft or fabrics which are, you know, stain resistant or, or crease resistant because a lot of people will be flying again soon. So, so this is important to me. And then in the evening, we'll be going more eccentric. But, you know, we're starting to, to even put some eccentricity in the day clothes as well. So, so this is this is always the starting point for me. You know, really, uh, for the winter collection, what do we do? I mean, we, we did, uh, we did, you know, cashmere coats which weigh nothing, but it looks like a cloud. Uh, we uh, we do tailing jackets which uh, you know uh, which are in the super super two hundreds, but they're B stretch, so they feel like a jersey suit, you know. But you look like. Uh, super classic in a way but you know they're super stretchy you know so you feel like uh, there's no more um, uh, limit of movement uh, then so, we so for you the the, the the newness is often coming through the fabrics yes, and, yes. And, and, and the lightness of fabric yes. so yes garments, unless they're light they yes. look terribly old-fashioned when you see such heavy garments now they seem dated because we're used to wearing jer as you mentioned jersey fabrics we yeah. live in jersey fabrics now you're creating fabrics that aren't jersey but they have the properties of jersey and it's the smartness of using the intrinsic value of a beautiful fabric that the fabric just talks and the design can be quite minimal because the fabric is doing all the work yeah, yeah. the design of the design is, is a good point adrian you know the design is quite minimal because my design philosophy is almost like you know i as a designer i don't want to be seen you know i uh, there's no clothes which is like norbert uh Brioni by norbert Stumpf. it's not it's nobody should see that there, it was designed by designer you know uh, it might be something very very opposite of anybody else because everybody wants to wear designer clothes and want to but for me it's almost the opposite our guy i think he wants to to put himself in the foreground and my designs are there to you know to to create a shoulder line which is really harmonious or to you know to, because sometimes our clients they you know they, they're, they're 40 50 or 60 year old men so they, they maybe have a little bit of a stomach so i have to create something which uh, helps them in a in a kind of silhouette to make them look slimmer and and, and this is my design work you know to, to create garments which are you know uh, very pleasing to the eye you know um, and there was a really nice compliment as well you know we were working with Brad Pitt uh, in the uh, as our as our testimonial and uh, he you know last time I was uh, in LA and he, he called me into his room and he's like oh my god what did I do, what did I do wrong um, he's like you know getting his assistant and he's like Robert he wants to talk to you it's like mm, what is going on um, then he tells me now no, but I have to really tell you, uh, since I'm wearing Brioni, you know, I, f I look good, but I feel incredible. I just wanted to say thank you. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, um, coming from him is like incredible. So, so this is, this is very nice. Um, the yeah, other thing is, would it be good to say that the branding, you don't need to say Brioni, it's the touch. If yes. you touch, you feel Brioni and it's yes. a yes. branding. Yes. And yes. it also has that, as you've noticed with Brad Pitt, that emotional connection to yes. touching fabric. And I think in many ways we've lost that. But going back to the luxury of a beautiful touch, of the yes. that says the brand, you don't have to write your name over everything. 
<laughs> you know, of course, you know, uh, this is this is my my vision for Brioni. Of course, it takes forever to get to the shop floor. You know, uh, Brioni is a very classic brand still. Uh, we're, still we're still doing a lot of you know the lookbooks look more modern and everything, but it takes time to to really move along and get the clients uh, into the the clothes as well. It, it takes time, you know. So sometimes you find some pieces of the new collection, and now we are we are accelerating because you know uh, we. Uh, we had actually before the pandemic started uh, there was a lot of uh, good news for Brioni because first of all uh, our sales were always uh, on the bespoke you know we're doing a wonderful bespoke service where, where everything is made to measure and uh, normally the high ticket sale coming in from bespoke but um, before the pandemic we, we finally made uh, you know also high ticket sales on the ready to wear which is you know so now uh, the management believes more and more in what they're doing, and uh, they're getting more pieces which are not so merchandised. Maybe I have to explain afterwards what merchandising means as well um, into the store. And uh, slowly, slowly, you will, you will see a change, but it's 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 quite slow in in, in this kind of businesses, you know. But um, I think we really need come... another hour to talk about merchandising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we need to actually see. We need to actually see if we've got any questions. I think at this point, otherwise. Yeah. Um, Another thing I, wanted, I want to talk to you yeah, is yeah, yeah. very important to me is, you know, we talked about innovation, but we never talk about, you know, uh, Italian craftsmanship. And this is very important to me as well, because um, I always, always, you know, almost my, my collaboration, you know, I'm not doing a collaboration with Nike, but I'm doing a collaboration with uh, Fabric Mills or people who, who do exceptional things in Italy. Uh, and this is very important. So um, I just wanted to, 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 to talk about this as well. Like some of our teachers are printed by hand, so they're, they're not uh, screen printed or, or whatever or, or digitally printed they're really printed by hand with a block print technique which is very old uh, then we have fabrics which are made uh, um, you know for instance uh, which is a little bit an innovation as well but we did last time we did this gold suit so a 24 karat gold suit uh, which is a silk which is uh, electromagnetically um, there's the gold put on the top of it the silk has the very softness and uh, we, we, we created a 24 so, um, so one of the manufacturers in Italy can, can do it and they also work for the Vatican, so something like that. Uh, we did uh, this season, we, we're gonna, um, we have a, a piece of uh, a jacket, for instance, uh, which is uh, done by Fondazione, Fondazione di Lisio, which we started six months ago to weave a fabric all done by hand. Um, it takes six months to weave uh, uh, two meters and um, the, the price of the jacket is phenomenal, but it really shows what we possible, really what we can do in Rioni. So uh, we also have these clients which uh, can spend uh, a fortune on one piece. So, so again, this is, is something which I really love to work with something which might not be existing in the next five years or ten years. And I want to bring this kind of old techniques back, you know, to really um, to really show that this exists in Italy still, and and it's really really important to me. Another thing we we work with. Um, uh, file ombre. File ombre is a is a fabric. Normally nowadays you do it with print. Huh? It's a it's a degradé. But you have to imagine that you have to to dye. We did it in black, uh, which goes into grey. Uh, so we have to dye fifty shades of black, fifty shades of um, dark dark grey, fifty shades of medium grey, fifty shades of uh, light to medium grey, fifty shades of you know like crazy. Oh, yeah. Everything has to be dyed by hand. And if you make one mistake, you have a scribe going through. So like a degradé, which is woven, which is really by one person dyed and then put on the loom. And then you have this effect of seamlessness degradé. Uh, it has not been used since uh, the 90s of couture. So we have this fabric as well. So it's, I love to work with these things. We're doing uh, silver pieces now. A matte latte is a non technique as well, where you hammer silver, everything is hammered by hand, and, and we, we create uh, cufflinks. And we did even an airport uh, holder this season, you know. You have so you have super innovative product, but it's, it's like it, it comes in a in a you know in a, in a real silver, handmade, hand matte latte kind of finish. So, so, this is what we can do in Brioni, uh, which is absolutely fabulous. You know? so, so, this innovation in 
uh, really into fabrics and getting lighter and more fine and uh, having you know properties that uh, the rain can uh, touch you and then really going the other way around where we really find uh, little small uh, fabricants which do something incredible which probably will uh, stop in the next five ten years or maybe through us becomes a little bit get more press and and maybe can survive and uh, give them some some it's our same experience here in academia because we work with a probably very similar Italian fabric manufacturers but it's the, the combination of craft and tradition with the newness and that's the newness brings it into fashion and it makes it wearable today but it's yeah. great to rediscover those old techniques uh, before they die even if it is painful to create yeah. Thousands of shades. It is actually worth worth it. It takes it to an art level. It takes it. It takes it to a level of human human possibilities. You know, human hands are possible to, to create this extreme beauty. And uh, this extreme beauty, I think, uh, nowadays we see a lot of things which are you know there's high production pieces on it. There, there, you know, um, there are you know hundreds or thousands of the same pieces in a very beautiful quality. Uh, they all look the same, but I think uh, the human hand is, is, is something which uh, a lot of people, you know, uh, inspire to, uh, or, or, or you, it touches them somehow, you know, because uh, you, can, you cannot throw a, a jacket like this away. It's impossible. I, I find it, uh, you know, it's something which you, which you give uh, afterwards to your children, you know, or, or to somebody, uh, you know, but you, you will never throw it in the in the in the trash because there's so you know that I, you know so to create something because I'm also a designer you know nowadays but this is my other thing that that uh, you know you don't want to create more stuff for this world it needs to make sense you know it means maybe it's really helped us as well this pandemic to really think and to edit you know even more to 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 create things which which have a meaning to be in this world which which uh, you know craftsmen like when i go uh, to penny penny is our our place where we all do our suits and the whole floor is standing around the jacket because it's so amazing and beautiful you know so this is really incredible to me you know Thank you. But I, I just love the idea that clothing should regain the idea that it's yes. passed down through generations, as it was for us. I remember getting a coat from my grandfather, and it was precious to me. And yeah. it, I didn't, you don't consider it secondhand. You consider it an, uh, an heirloom, a, pe a piece that belongs to the family. So thank you for bringing that tradition back to the world, that items, okay, this incredibly expensive, but they have a lifelong uh, beyond the human life, they can last for such much long time. Denise, do we have any questions? Otherwise, we will we'll be here discussing merchandise for another two hours. Yes, we have some okay. questions. Okay, let's start with uh, Cecilia. Uh, okay, she says, um, nice to hear how you design. Okay, so she likes the, the webinar. So I'm really curious to know if in the last one year and a half, you have consciously changed something in your production uh, because of the pandemic. Um, uh, is something that you are taking in account in your creation? So if the pandemic has a, somehow uh, affected affected your your creation your production. Yes, of course, I would be lying that the pandemic didn't you know influence uh, Brioni. Of course, it did influence Brioni. It's it's a it's a massive 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 uh, problem for us because um, you know our our customer are a men who wear suits to the office, and and many offices are closed. Many offices are are working remotely, so. Uh, our customers don't need suits, you know. So it's really a uh, very, very uh, a big problem for us. Of course, now we see in science that everything is picking up again because, you know, everybody wants to to invest in, in new clothes, probably they also because the gains are big, so <laughs> lucky for us. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a huge uh, problem and it's for, for everybody. I, I, I talk to, you know, fashion brands I, I, because, you know, in some artists I have a lot of, um, 
you know, friends who are now working at all different levels of, uh, you know, fashion from mass market to, to luxury, to real design, to, you know, avant-garde. And they all have the same problem because uh, stores have been closed for so many, so, so much time. So, of course, big influence, which makes, uh, you know, the collection much, much smaller. So we, we, we really try to edit, you know, and really, uh, and, and this is something I think very important because uh, before we try to please everybody, you know, we, we try to create it, create it, create it, create it, and we do this, we do that, we do that, and, and we don't uh, really, you know, focus. And I think now we are focusing and we, and I think it's, it's, will help us even more in the long run to really um, look back, uh, look what's important to us, uh, give a very clear vision what uh, Brioni stands for. And, um, you know, this, this kind of uh, pandemic really probably was, was very, very good for us as well, because it's, it's really like made us think again. First of all, I spent much more time with my designers. You know, we were out for two months and uh, we would have this kind of uh, conversation as well um, between the two of us you know on a daily basis i'm i'm uh, I, i'm drawn in different meetings and uh, you know i'm i'm you know we, we never have really time to talk about things but it was really like first of all i think it brought us more together so, so this is a really good part uh, we we are reading up a lot of things we are listening to podcasts uh, what the future might look like uh, so we are always looking what's going on uh, even if, if we are a classic brand we are always looking what the young designers are doing what the avant-garde designers are doing what luxury is doing you know we are, we are designers anyways you know if you love fashion you you can look at fashion the whole day and you never get bored, you know. I, I I get inspired by you know by so many different layers of you would not you know from Martin Rose to to you know Balenciaga to to uh, the, the people what Chil Sun is doing. Uh, I don't know. There, there's you know there's all the London designers which I find super interesting. You know from from Greg Green to you know everything. Uh, we look at them for sure because. Uh, my team is quite young and and, and uh, you know very energetic and in, innovative. I mean, um, so we're looking at all of it and and we try to make sense uh, for Brioni, you know. So um, so this was very good that we really started talking again. And uh, you know, I, I think also for the men, for our clients, you know, it's it's really we're going through all together through that uh, as well. Um, we did a huge push on sustainability. And it's not greenwashing. It's really like, uh, you know, for, for us at Brioni and uh, for the caring group, it's it's something which we, uh, it's not, I talked to Mr. Yubino and, and really for him, it's it's crucial. And, and for me as well, because, you know, this is something which we're gonna face and uh, we, we, we have to continue. And uh, it's crucial to, to continue and, and get more and more sustainable options into our collections. So. I think it makes uh, a reflection and uh, really, I think, really uh, making less clothes, making more uh, clothes which uh, have sense, uh, more studied, more questions asked, uh, uh, all of that, you know, I would, I would say that. That was a thank you. answer, thank you. Denise, do we have more questions, please? Yes, another one is from uh, Filomena. Uh, so she says, uh, in your opinion, what is the most important skill that young creatives need to uh, to start a career in fashion industry today? I think the most important thing is to be honest with you. It's really the most important. Why is somebody, you know, um, want to take you if you want to fake it you know you have to really be yourself you have to because then you touch people otherwise um, you you fake it and people will see very very quickly so you have to trust in yourself you have to continue you have to you know believe in yourself I think it's the best uh, 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 thing you can do I think it's also helpful to, to, to learn the craft I, I mean um, I don't know. It's 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 something you know. I think uh, you really need to know as well that fashion is not a glamorous business. It's something which takes a lot of dedication, and you know sometimes you you 
you you you work in in areas where you know uh, you know you work if you go to Milan but you work in an industrial area outside of Milan and you don't go even to the center you know and uh, there's a lot of traveling involved there's you know it's it's uh, it's a uh, it's a very tough business uh, it's people tell you always something that you do not like but right you know they always try to you know know better but but you really have to trust yourself and not to, you know, you have to listen to the uh, criticism, but you also have to know when you don't have to listen to criticism. So it's really important. But then I think it's one of the most incredible uh, jobs as well. I mean, we are we are creating something which we start from an, from a, one idea. Um, we, we, we do the, the first fittings, we choose the fabric, we choose the color, we choose the trims. And then, uh, you know, a garment, um, cr we create something. And then uh, the most amazing things is when you see things on the street or, or for me, you know, sometimes uh, when I see um, the, uh, on, on, our, on the, our people on the red carpet or something mm -hmm. like that, it's like, so you're also proud, you know, there's the, the tailors who worked on it and, and, and everything it's, it's just extreme happiness you know so it's an amazing amazing business it's um, of course it's 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 very tough uh, there's a lot of competition out there but be yourself try to 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 go to a group which you really love the style try to you know uh, so so you don't have to, to to change too much your own vision because then it can be very very helpful for for designer uh, like uh, you know um, you know so so it's something I would you know really stick to your ideas I think it would be nice but also be able to work in a team it's not like being on your own because I think it's, it's also this kind of teamwork which is very important nowadays as well so I don't know totally teamwork is essential i would say also be flexible when you're still a student keep your mind open to suggest when you're a student yes. like, you can be a little bit more focused but um, when you're a student let's listen to feedback as you did with Louise. so you got amazing feedback from Louise. you always had to rethink yourself yes you have to always question yourself and listen a lot to the feedback. Uh, Denise, do we have any more such interesting questions? Uh, yes, and uh, okay, let me choose. Uh, okay, so Arshal has a question about men's fashion. So she says, um, according to her, uh, men's fashion is underrepresented by fashion institutes in general, she says. And however, um, what do you think? Do you think this is something you found out also in your uh, career, in your education? Because she says hey, she's a menswear enthusiast. Okay. So she would like to attend this type of... She's talking to the right people. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, uh, menswear, of course, it has a, it's in the shadow of menswear, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, but uh, I think there's more and more interest in menswear as well. And, you know, uh, I think it's nice to be in this outsider role. I it, I don't mind it. You know, it's it's um, I I'm very comfortable with it. You know, I of course um, there was this push lately that uh, uh, men's and women's are on the same catwalk, which in one direction I find very very uh, nice as a three sixty degree. But sometimes you know um, the women's wear is overpowering the men's wear, and then the men's wear have to be um, more crazy and maybe it's not uh, you know uh, realistic anymore for real men I don't know um, it's it's an open-ended question you know um, I really enjoy it when Helmut Lang put men and women on the same level because it's the same designer and I think uh, that was very beautiful I I don't know I, I really don't know um, I, I I like where we are. I, I I tend to not complain. I I I work with my boundaries. Uh, I yes, it's true. In in magazines, you see more women's wear uh, than men's wear. But yes, I, no, I cannot tell you. Probably not. Anyways, um, we have now we have now a client. Uh, we have now a client who was a very 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 famous women's wear designer. She's out of design, but she's wearing our clothes now. But I cannot tell you the name. But maybe you know what I'm talking about. 
but I think this quality of design in menswear, whether it's shouting or it's being quiet, mm. menswear is always progressing, always being interesting. It, uh, and perhaps women's wear gets uh, overloaded with the noise and the shouting. Mm. Uh, and and where, where men's wear can actually be more about pure design and doesn't have to be so, may I say, vulgar, because we don't sexualize a man in the way a woman gets sexualized. So we can actually work at different levels with men. So if, I only ever studied men's wear all the way through, but I had to fight for it because we didn't have a men's wear course at St. Martin's uh, or the Royal when I was there. I had no men's wear tutors. You just had to fight your way through it. And uh, sometimes that makes you stronger. So if you're not a men's wear course and you want to study men's wear, keep going anyway. You, you make it regardless because that's what I believe in. It's a design aesthetic and it doesn't matter on the back gender. And we are living in an age where gender now is very fluid, thank goodness, and uh, women want to wear brioni, I'm sure, as much as... as so, much yeah, we have an epic person as a client. I mean, I mean, I heard this, I was like, oh, my God. Uh, yes. Like a, a spectacular woman's design. I was copied all the time. But, uh, you know, like this kind of women who who put on a men's coat and looks super, wow, you know, this is my my dream as well. And there is women coming into the, the Brioni stores and, and buy small sizes. And I think it's fabulous. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, yeah. Let, let dress people. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. They can choose. You know? yeah. it's, it's great. Denise, any more questions? We have a, a question from uh, Christiana. Who says, uh, how do you educate your customers to understand, appreciate and value your products so that it's clear to them why they are at that price point, uh, even when not everyone is necessarily aware of how much work goes into uh, just one piece. Yeah. Uh, in a world uh, in which everyone wants things so fast and cheap, how do you make sure to keep the Brioni DNA alive and distinguish itself from the market. Yes, uh, this is really the question. What I have been yes, a big one. <laughs> uh, every day, because you know, um, my designs are not easy to sell. You know, um, first of all, you don't see anything from fifty meters away. You don't recognize it really. So it's uh, it's a design which doesn't exist. Um, the colors are very classic. Um, everything is is made to almost uh, you know, almost like the you know. That design doesn't exist, but of course it exists because uh, all this work goes in to make this kind of garments. Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, you know technique going in, but um, so it's very difficult to explain to our clients. But then, when first of all, our client is luckily very very um, uh, loyal. So when they're trying on the pieces, they they really like it. And uh, you know, as as uh, we said with Brad Pitt, he he just it is great in them. So, of course, it takes much, much longer to 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 get people into the store. But uh, there's word word of mouth. Uh, I think once we really stand for something, and and the men see that we we are continuing with the style, uh, and uh, you know they have more possibilities to, to to wear things. You know, at the moment we are we are dressing a lot of. Uh, of Chinese uh, actors, and they're like 25 to 35, and they're really liking the style. So uh, we are getting very well known in, in Japan as well. So Japan, they're very sophisticated, and they really love, love fabrics, and they love texture. So I think, you know, we might not, um, you know, um, talk to, to clients who, who prefer more, more out you know, extra words closing, but but we have this kind of uh, areas um, where we're getting more and more recognized. So and I think it will just grow slowly, you know. But in the end, it's better for us as well because we would not be anyway be capable of uh, you know uh, producing from one day to the next uh, like double as much. Um, of course, you know because uh, everything is handmade, so it takes a lot of time. We need to have, we have the right people. So. Um, in a way, this is, you know, it's better for us to grow very slowly as well, you know, because uh, we need to put uh, everything in place. Uh, um, 
because there was so much change in, in the company and we need to you know there, there's in the back we, we need to to we have time to still organize everything as well so um but um i have the feeling that um there will be a change in the in the in the pendulum i think that there will be a change that people will be you know having the um, the wardrobe school of sneakers and, and sweatshirts and printed t-shirts and at one point they will say hey, what am i doing i think there's a lot of questioning now as well already that uh, we, we spent uh, quite a lot of time with out buying clothes and and we we felt maybe that buying clothes is a quick fix so maybe uh, there, there's a lot of talks around that you know customer customers are changing i don't know if it's going to happen um very quickly but there is this uh you know uh, i think feeling that we're going to go back to something else which is more sustainable which is, makes more sense which you know um, uh, which you know favor favorizes people which uh you know have have real technique but of course it takes much longer to explain but i feel that there is a movement of you know interest in this kind of uh, thing as well so and I'm, I'm very proud of that to be a part of of this um, new thinking as well where um, maybe it's less more limited um, production uh, but more more you know, more more work done, more more time invested in these comments, uh, more handwork, more you know, um, all these kind of things which which creates a garment which has you know a soul almost you know and not something you throw away. So I have a feeling that that we uh, there is always the question: Is the suit dead? Is the tailor dead? But uh, it's always coming back, and it's always interesting. And and I see uh, you know a lot of men wearing tailoring completely different way. So I think um, once you hit the, uh, you know, uh, uh, like 40, 50 year, year old, you, 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 tailoring can help you to, to look slimmer as well. So, as well. But you, you have to wear it in a different way. So, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of positive always. So I'm trying to do, to make a modern wardrobe for men. So, so that's, but of course, it's not easy. We have a, we have in our training our 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 sales people get get very well uh, trained now. Um, they're taking part with also with uh, you know uh, teams. They get taking part in the in the explanation of the of the collection, which never happened before. But there's really like now a lot of workshops uh, included so to really explain properly the the guns, you know. So it takes time. It takes time, but uh, I'm quite sure that it will. But th this training of the retail staff also brings us back into stores because I want to go into a store and get the story. I want to go into the store and get the experience. I don't want to be online. So I think also that you're working in the correct direction, hopefully, to, to regain the trust of clients that they want to have a dialogue, they want the narrative, they want to hear about the fabrics. So wonderful that you're training the staff because there's nothing worse than going to a store especially today after we can buy online and zero experience and zero support you just want to walk out now it makes me very angry i'm passionate about people who can not sell you something but tell you the story behind the garments you're going to buy you're going to commit to um no, it's, it's, super important. it's super important because we even have our own tailors in every store even when you go to tokyo there is a tailor uh italian guys uh, which are more you know, overseas, um, they are trained in our school in Penn and they have to go there for five years and they really understand how the tailoring is made. So in every store you go to, in our flagship stores of Rayomi, you will have somebody who really knows how to fit your garment and to really help you. So this is a really uh, great help as well, you know. And uh, of course our, 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 our sellers in boutique there, they, they created relationship with our clients. Um, sometimes they're invited to the houses and they bring the collection with them. Sometimes they ask to, to buy just for them, uh, you know, from the collection because they know each other for years and years and years. So, and they also, you know, show them new things. Uh, but it, of course it takes time, you know, uh, but this is really nice. It's, it's really like a, a relationship with them. And uh, I think 
it's 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 a it's a nice way of of working you know um because it's it brings the human touch in everything you know not only the garment is very human but it's it has the storytelling and it has also the the selling is 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 very calm and very friendly and i think in uh, if you go to a brilliant store and you're probably uh, intimidated. I think our salespeople are trained to really feel, make you feel comfortable, not run after you and, you know, uh, like a shadow. And they're just very, you know, very relaxed. And, uh, you know, it's, it's you know, you don't, you cannot be pushed into buying garments because you never come back, you know. So, so they know it takes time. Sometimes people love our clothes, but they cannot afford them and they will call them up, you know, um, uh, now this garment is on sale, you know, maybe or something like that, or you know, that just take the time. So, so. thank you. It's a beautiful answer. So it's very positive. You are a very positive person, very positive about the fashion industry. <laughs> yes. I think we need that. We need that romancing back. Yes, I'm sometimes a bit romantic, but uh, anyways, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I think. Where's uh, the puppy gone? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Where's the puppy gone? It's My wife was picking her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the puppy was making appearance. The member of the family was making appearance before, uh, before we came on air. So we've lost the puppy. Denise, do we have any more questions? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. 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 Well, thank you, Norbert, for your precious time. Um, menswear. It's a very important time at the moment for menswear because you're coming very close again uh, to the collections and the show. So we really appreciated your time talking to us today. Um, so thank you so much for that. It's really, really great for you to talk to us. And, and just let us know about uh, the whispering of great fashion and how fashion can be so subtle. I'm not known for my subtlety, but it doesn't mean I appreciate it in everybody else. Oh, I, I, uh, Adrian, thank you so much for doing this. It's exciting. And you know, I, I, I really appreciate like people like you. And thank you, Denise. I, I really like you know, people who are individual, who, who just are what they are, you know, and uh, um, it can be, you know, a style like mine, which is much more in the background. It can be a style which is, you know, it, I, I love it. I just love it, you know. It's just so nice to see uh, individual, you know, like really what you are. That's the most important thing, you know, that you want to are and what you want to do. And of course, as we said, it's into your to your team, it doesn't really help you, but uh, in the end, you know, yeah, or go for what what you like, because then we get something really, really individual, and peop there will be people out there who like the same thing as you. So um, don't try to please everybody because it's gonna be a fake. Try to just be yourself, and you will be, you will be, you know, you will find the audience. I love the idea. Don't try to please everybody because everybody yes. doesn't like you. No, no. <laughs> Why please everybody? Because they all don't no. like you. So no. let's find our niche market always. I think that's so important. Exactly. Yeah. It's so much of a bit of for everybody. The old people, all these individuals, uh, and it's going to be such a, a nice, you know, really, you know, not everybody looks the same. So it's, it's nice. It's nice. Uh, Thank you. We love diversity. Yes, yes. We need different people in the fashion industry to bring yes. more diversity to the market and get different points of views, the quiet, whispering points of view. I am also from a small village. You don't have to come from a big city, uh, no. boast a big fashion and a big glamorous lifestyle. You can just fight your way through the village and find your way to whisper about fashion for your life. It's, it's, your way. it's amazing because you really have you really have uh, a voice. It's it's really you know it can make changes, and uh, I think it's 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 incredible. You, you have we are, you know in the fashion industry we are very powerful in what we say about the individuals, what we you know want to push, uh, how we include people. Uh, it's 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 you know I think it's very modern, and I think we we never should forget that we really can change the world with our decisions and what we looking at, and uh, you know. Uh, this is this is really uh, incredible. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much again. Uh, thank you. I look forward to seeing you in Academia soon. Yes, if yes. 
dopo un aperitivo a Roma. We'll show okay. you time. Okay. Ciao. We'll get the dogs to meet. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mr. Gomez needs to appear. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.